You want to you wanna straight pipe your truck, you're going to learn how to do it today very inexpensively. Hey friends, Joe the Farmer here. In today's video, we're going to kind of start to close the circle on the 2005 Ford F-350. We bought this thing for $1,500. We have a couple other videos of, you know, picking it up. And I'd really like to get this thing to be a good, decent farm truck. So if you've watched some of the other videos, you know that so far we've changed the hood struts, we've changed the oil, we changed the fuel filters, put some windshield wipers on it, uh, topped off the power steering fluid because that was whining really bad, changed the air filter, you know, basically did a whole service on it, right? But the catalytic converter was stolen on it and I needed to, you know, basically straight pipe that. And then the second thing is, is that the intercooler boot is in terrible shape. So it's just, there, there's really, have, this thing has a lot of breathing problems. The two biggest issues that this truck really has had is those two things. And then it needs cab bushings. There's some interior stuff that could be done. But um, before I get to those, which are gonna be a little bit more in depth, I wanna make sure this thing is, uh, as I keep using the word seaworthy, right? I wanna make sure that this thing is gonna start up and run and be reliable for a farm truck you know, starts eight out of 10 times, we're happy, and maybe show you just how you can replace an exhaust um, that has had your catalytic converter stolen, or if you wanna straight pipe something, I'm not gonna tell you if it's legal or not, that's up to you and your state and, you know, <laughs> your governor, your, all those people, and your God. So I think this exhaust fix is gonna be about 65 bucks. It's very, very uh, cost effective, as opposed to buying another catalytic converter, which, you know, these things sit so high up off the ground that, it's just, it's just prey at this point, right? And this thing's gonna live out on a farm. Uh, with that said, let's get to work. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about the tools that we're using as we go through this. And uh, just like the other video, I wanna remind you pretty much everything I bought on Amazon. The only two things I did not buy on Amazon are these Ford intercooler boots. So I did not buy aftermarket. There's a lot of aftermarket uh, boots like this. This is the bottom side and this is the top side. It's kind of a little more angled. And one thing I've realized is that a lot of people complain about how these boots are incredibly susceptible to popping off if you get the knockoffs. Everyone says get the Motorcraft, so I got the Motorcraft, they're more expensive. The other thing is that if you have a 2005 or a 2003 or four, six, whatever it is, some of these things will vary. This one, for instance, is a late 2005. Uh, it was built and this particular build date uses a longer boot. The other one will work, but you know, may as well get the right part. This thing's like 75 bucks for rubber boots. I mean, come on, right? But has to be done and we're gonna get it done. So let's get to work on the boots first and then we'll let the exhaust cool down for me driving it in here and then we'll get to work on the exhaust and I'll show you how to get the cheap exhaust fix. So anyway, let's get to work. Okay, so for anyone checking, the bit that we're using here is a 7 16th and this would be a really nice time to have one of those fancy auto ratchet things. Back that out. And then we're gonna keep these on here if we can. I'm gonna back them totally off. Yeah, those little auto ratchet things, those things are awesome. But I guess somebody would say this one's working just fine. All right, now this clamp we want to keep on the actual housing down here. That sucker's loose yet. Oh, there we go. Now this should pop off, which it did. And this should pop off, which it did. Well, I'd say this one's probably not in the worst shape. This boot seems okay. It's very, very loose that that heat will loosen them up, but this one is obviously, that sucker's toast. There's oil in there, which is normal. But yeah, I'm almost wondering if this is the shorter part that they put on here instead of the right part. We'll find out. All I'm doing right now is just marking, if you can see this white line here, I don't even know that this is really the right position to have it, but this is how it was on the uh, truck. So I wanna go ahead and make sure that I at least document that here. I'm not sure if this one has a white mark on it or not. It doesn't, but I'm gonna mark here that uh, this is where the clamp is facing up. Now I'm gonna take these boots off and get them with some brake clean. Well. <laughs> Yeah, these things were done. This one comes off easy. Yep, no problem. Easy peasy. Now it never ceases to amaze me how many of you guys make fun of me for wearing gloves. 
what I don't understand is if you got a pretty girl at the end of the day when you're done doing this stuff and wants to hold your hand, do you really want to have diesel fuel and oil and stuff all over you? This is not entirely necessary, but in my mind, I'm in here. I may as well go ahead and get this thing cleaned up as much as possible. I'm not going to spray any brake clean on the inside of it. You can see all that stuff right there just caked on there. This will give us a better seal. I'm going to put that new one on there. Really don't want to lubricate. I want to get a good, good bite with those clamps. You know, quick plug. As cold as it is today, just going out there, my hands are freezing just from going out there doing this. That little heater from Tractor Supply is awesome. Not sponsored. Got it at Tractor Supply. That thing is great. It's electric. Plug it in. That thing has saved my bacon the past few days. So, pop this thing open. Now these things look identical. And if you look here, this part right here is where your band is gonna go. So once we get this <coughs> puppy in here, let's try and mock that up a little bit. Looks like this needs to turn just a little bit. All right, so there's a lip on the inside of here as you can see right in there, and that lip will actually fit in this little crevice, and you'll feel it. So it doesn't go all the way in. You'll feel what it grips. Probably should have had that clip on there before I did that, though. As I said before, I am YouTube certified. Never done this before. So mocking that up. Looks like that's got to twist a little bit. Now all I'm doing here is mocking this up. I want to make sure this is the right part number. YC35 6C640B. Well, first four numbers are wrong, but these are pretty clearly the same part. So rolling with it. Put that clamp on there first. Once I feel that lip catch. Sorry about all that crackling on the audio. <laughs> it's it's crusty. So I have this pointing up. No other reason other than it's going to be easier to get that impact in there to tighten it down. We don't want this super tight. We just want to crush those springs. Before I really tighten this stuff down, I'll hop back in here and see if it's lining up. Nope. That's why you mock it up. This is actually starting to rub into that battery case, which I don't like, so I'm going to swap this over. It may have been like that initially, and experience would probably be a good teacher on that. But by swapping it over, now that's just on the other side. Whoop. This is the part where experienced diesel mechanics are watching this video and saying, this guy's an idiot. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one down. Air conditioning lines in the way. Trying to get you some decent video of this down here, but it is tough because it's pretty confined little space. If I can get my phone and a flashlight, it would help. That's where the guys with the little hands excel are right here. All right, that should be on there pretty good. I'm not going to say that's not going anywhere because I know better.
All right, let's see if we can get some good video topside. Okay, this is the part with Joe standing on a bucket. Trying to figure out, all right, I need to change this. This is not right. That needs to point up a little bit more. I don't like it pointing towards that alternator. So this is the problem. These are notorious. Let's see about the, yeah, there we go. These are notorious for not having the best angle. I could come in here right now with a big you know, Chevy verse four joke, but I'm the guy working on his phone and <laughs> on his own Ford. It's no, probably not a real smart joke to make. I've known more than one person that wouldn't mind taking a Ford engineer behind the woodshed. Just ask them what they were thinking. That's all. That's all. It's a family channel. You know, this is not a Ford engineer problem. This is a Joe stupid problem. Aha. Uh -huh. Look at that. Uh-huh. This one will be fine where it's at. That was the problem. Sorry, Ford engineers. My bad. Probably not the first time someone ran their mouth on YouTube and probably shouldn't have, but it may be the first time someone apologized for it. All right, that should be it right there. Good access to get a ratchet in there. If it pops off again, which... By what I read on the internet of everyone else, it will. I'm leaving this one exactly how it is. Tighten this one down first. I'm trying to feel where that lip is. You can crush these things real easy. That should be good for now. So as I'm cleaning things up, you know, end of the or moral of the story is you're going to have some oil in these things. You know, they're definitely carrying some oil vapor and stuff in the turbo. That's not unusual. But when you start having things like this, that's where that breathing issue is coming from. Um, I think at least. And some of this is just you know, there's a lot of complaints about these six O's, and I talked about in the other video. There's a lot of class action lawsuits against them because stuff like this to where, well, I mean, why not just angle that a little bit more to where it's a more complete grip, but I don't know. There's tons of aftermarket parts. They're extremely expensive. They're, you know, thousands of dollars in some cases to bulletproof your 6.0, but I'm not paying thousands of dollars to bulletproof this 6.0. We're gonna run it, and if it dies, it dies. <laughs> What's that from Rocky? If he dies, he dies. Bunch of trash. Okay, so from quite literally Googling and going on uh, YouTube and trying to figure out what the absolute cheapest way to fix this exhaust system would be to where it's not coming in the cab and smelling, I came up with this company. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, well, it's made in China, of course. And this is just an exhaust pipe, which is longer. It's not cut to length and it's kind of obnoxious looking if you ask me. I don't, I'm not really looking for, you know, super chromed out look to a, you know, to a 6.0 Ford. But these clamps are incredibly simple to where you just take this clamp on one side of this new pipe, one side of the exhaust, take your handy uh, impact, drive it down and it should just flow through there. So I'm gonna have to cut this pipe. I need to measure once, cut twice. Measure twice, cut once. I don't know, we'll figure it out. But in order to do this, we need to get under the truck. And thank you, Guido, for letting me borrow your creeper. This is gonna save my back. You're a sweet man. So this piece right here, 
So just loop on, put it on there, get your impact driver, get that down good and tight, you know, torque spec, and then measure from here to here, because this is where the catalytic converter used to be. And the guy that cut the catalytic converter wasn't kind enough to make this level. This part's longer than that part. So what we need to do is get our measuring machine here, figure out what that measurement is. Looks like about 26 and a half. Came with all the hardware. Looks like pretty decent stuff. My confidence level on this is probably about a six out of 10. Uh, six because the parts all look like they're gonna fit and interchange well. Uh, I'm missing four points because a lot of this stuff look, appears to be made out of chinesium, so we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm gonna mock this stuff up and then get it under there, cut this pipe, and then we're gonna get the pipe on. That's probably how they got the catalytic converter off in the first place. So, see if it fits. All right, so quick recap. Replace the top side, hot side, intercooler uh, boot. Replace the bottom inter intercooler boot, Ugh, tongue twister. And we repaired the exhaust system. So any of my 6.0 guys out there that are watching this that are, you know, you guys know a heck of a lot more than I'll ever know about this stuff. Tell me what you're hearing. If you're hearing something crazy, this is still super cold. I mean, I just got to jump. I'm, hopefully it'll start now, but tell me what you guys are hearing. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm hearing. It's a lot quieter. Let's see if we actually have exhaust coming out of the pipe. Wouldn't that be something? wonder how many mice are stuck in that thing. <laughs> Look at that. Before we kill ourselves in carbon monoxide poisoning, let's back it up a little bit. Oh my gosh, what a difference. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a truck, not a hoopty now. So far, so good, looking good. So again, 6.0 guys, tell me, what am I missing? I mean, to me, it sounds like a great old rattling truck, but I don't know, you guys tell me. Well, that's gonna do it today. It's cold. Uh, the crusty Ford F350 Power Stroke Diesel is alive. The exhaust seems to be patched for now. And you know, if this ever becomes a big on the road truck, I'll, I'll put a cat on there, but I'm not, I don't know. I don't have a ton of confidence. You know, these things leak oil like crazy. There's the oil leaks all under it everywhere, which I know is kind of common uh, from what I've read. They're, you know, for 1500 bucks, it could be one heck of a side-by-side, -side, right? Something that can actually hold like 20,000 pounds in the back of it. My ideas for this thing are gonna be very, very simple. You know, uh, I, want to, I don't wanna get stuck somewhere. That's number one. Number two is if I need something really heavy lifting or, you know, something that's kind of, you know, rough work, I don't really wanna to do to my nice truck then this one's gonna get the, it's gonna get the, the business. But I've already priced out a couple of things on it that if I decide to take it to the next level that I'll do, I could replace the seat and uh, actually the vinyl flooring for about 800 bucks, which is pretty reasonable, you know, for getting that done. Cause that's really the kind of the nastiest part about the inside of it. And, you know, for right now, I think it really just needs to run. It, it needs to be, you know, put on the road, put on the farm, like worked and then kind of evaluate. But you, you all out there that have a lot more knowledge than I do, I know there's a lot of people that love these motors. I, I know people love tinkering on them because they're really easy to work on, especially some of the nitpicky stuff. But when it comes to like replacing injectors and you know tearing the heads off, I'm, I'm not gonna do any of that stuff to this thing. I don't, I don't have the time, I don't have the patience, and I don't really wanna put the money into it. Um, but I think it should run fine just like it is. If I get a couple of years out of it, great. If I get 10 years out of it, even better. So anyway, Y'all tell me what you think. If you wanna see some more videos on this truck, there's some nitpicky stuff I really need to do. Like I need to replace the headlights. One of them, you know, it's winking at you all the time. It's not legal. There's uh, one of these cab marker lights is out. Yeah, that's a two, $3 piece. And some of that stuff to me, like I don't, I don't think anybody wants to watch. If y'all wanna watch it, I'll do it. I'm happy to do videos on it. If you wanna see more of it, uh, probably the last video of this is I'm gonna super clean this thing. I'm gonna go through it, 
get the uh, get the funk off of it, clean it up. You know, because I personally, as I've said before, like to take care of things that I have. Even if it's a crusty old truck, I'm still going to take care of it. And I think that, especially under the hood, you know, under the carriage, you know, we'll super clean that. Then we'll fluid film it so it's you know rust preventative. And I kind of want to at least bring it back to where it should be now, and then stop any further deterioration. You know, which sitting in a you know a wet gravel lot, you know, these things can start to rot pretty quick, which is where it was. So we may have saved its life. It, it it may give us it may not give us much more time, but I hope that y'all have enjoyed watching me work on this thing. Again, I'm not a mechanic. I just really I love being in the barn. I love tinkering with stuff. And you know, I was hoping that today would be a little bit warmer because Clay and I are gonna go ride some four wheelers and just have a good time. Uh, but I have some fun trail camera videos coming up. One of which is one that's really unique. I don't I don't think that anyone's ever seen something like this. And you know, we're, we're getting to the point where the tractor's gonna start getting to stretch its legs a little bit. So if you're not following the channel, we'd love to have you hit the like button, subscribe, you know, make sure you're hitting the notification tab because, you know, this kind of content isn't, uh, we'll just say it's not the mothership's primary interest. So uh, if you like this kind of stuff, be sure to hit that notification bell and tell your friends. If, if you enjoy the channel, tell your friends about us. We really appreciate it. We're trying to grow the channel. Uh, it helps us get more views which helps us get more cool stuff on the farm to show you. And we're not in, in this for money or free stuff or anything like that, but you know, this kind of content's enjoyable. So 1500 bucks, I mean, I don't mind spending 1500 bucks to have fun and have another tool on the farm. And if it gives you all some entertainment, money well spent. So appreciate you watching. Catch you on the next one, Joe the Farmer. We out.